Good afternoon. Thank you to everybody here in Brussels. Uh, thank you, of course, to all of those who join us uh, by video link in Kabul, Ambassador Simon Gass uh, and some of the Kabul-based journalists who you're not able to see on the screen, but they're there. Uh, and of course, to those who are following us via web stream. Uh, Ambassador Gass uh, will be with us for about half an hour, uh, and I'll give him the floor very shortly. Of course, he'll be happy to take your questions. Let me start by mentioning that the North Atlantic Council met yesterday with our ISAF partners to take stock of the situation in Afghanistan, where we've seen several tragic incidents with the latest in Kandahar province on Sunday. As you know, the Secretary General expressed his shock and sadness. He offered his heartfelt condolences and sympathy to the families of those killed and wounded and to the Afghan people and the Afghan government. He fully supports General Allen's commitment to establish the facts and hold anyone responsible to account. He reaffirmed NATO's firm commitment to our mission of building a strong and stable Afghanistan together with our Afghan partners. And that was very much the sense among all 50 ISAF nations yesterday. This is a challenging road, but we have a roadmap which we all agreed at the Lisbon summit. We stick to the roadmap. We're making headway, and we're keeping the goal in sight. And that's an Afghanistan where Afghans are fully in charge of security by the end of 2014, and an Afghanistan which never again harbors extremists that can threaten our own security. And of course, we have an enduring commitment to Afghanistan beyond 2014, and our Chicago summit will make that even clearer. With that, let me hand over to Ambassador Gass in Kabul, NATO senior civilian representative in Afghanistan. Ambassador Gass. Well, Ivana, thank you very much uh, for that introduction. And I'd like really to start off by echoing uh, some of your remarks. Uh, the last few weeks have really been uh, difficult ones for ISAF, but also for its Afghan partners as we've faced a series of very unfortunate incidents with the uh, accidental burning of the Quran, the murder of uh, two US officers in the Ministry of the Interior, and now most recently and most shockingly, the really appalling events which we've seen in Panjway in which uh, it appears that uh, a soldier has uh, committed um, multiple uh, acts of murder on Afghan uh, citizens, including women and children. And of course, it's natural that when we have such events that strong emotions are triggered, not only in Afghanistan, but also uh, in our host countries uh, as well. And uh, I'm not surprised to have read over the last few days a number of articles by journalists and by commentators and editors asking whether our strategy uh, in relation to Afghanistan is the right one, whether we should be trying to speed up our exit from Afghanistan. Uh, and I'd like to uh, comment on uh, some of those, uh, those questions. And I think the place to start is that, uh, of course, these events that we've witnessed in the last few weeks have been tragic. They have, of course, uh, dented confidence uh, in some places, and they've caused a, a good deal of anger and shock uh, amongst the Afghan people. But they are the acts of a very, very small number of, of individuals uh, in the context of a campaign in which uh, I see uh, thousands, indeed hundreds of thousands, of Afghans uh, working alongside ISAF troops and in the civilian sector too to achieve our shared goals in terms of our Afghanistan strategy. Uh, and so although I think that inevitably events of this sort do cause uh, a bit of a knock. Uh, I would not agree with those who have been trying to argue that in some way the bonds of trust between uh, Afghans and their ISAF partners have been broken. I don't think that that is true. I think it's also important when we think about ISAF's mission to remember what we need to do between now and the end of 2014. And I see three major tasks which ISAF needs to carry on with. The first, of course, is to 
build and to train the Afghan national security forces so that they are in a position to take over the responsibility for maintaining Afghanistan's security. The second task is to proceed with the process of transition agreed with President Karzai by which we gradually hand over uh, that security responsibility to the Afghan security forces. And the third in the meantime is to work with the Afghans to ensure that the uh, insurgents uh, are repelled and are not able to pose a threat to the uh, government of Afghanistan. And if we achieve those goals, then I believe that we are able to build the security platform on which the Afghans themselves will be able to uh, construct their own future. And that means delivering the stability for Afghanistan, which uh, will ensure that Afghan uh, a territory does not again become uh, a sort of uh, benign environment for international terrorism and therefore the risk uh, to our own countries. We're seeing some real uh, results in all of these areas, and, and these are not just uh, matters of opinion. You know, there is a good deal of evidence showing the uh, effect which our strategy is having uh, in Afghanistan. Uh, if we look at attacks by insurgents in 2011, they fell uh, significantly compared with 2010. Uh, they are still, of course, uh, a serious problem. The insurgency is still resilient and capable. Uh, but despite forecasts of increases in uh, enemy attacks last year, we actually saw uh, a reduction. Secondly, the process of security transition is on track, uh, and we are seeing some uh, very encouraging results, particularly in relation to the earliest areas which we put into the process of transitioning security responsibility to the Afghan authorities. And the chairman of the Transition Coordination Commission told me recently that when he had first gone down to places like Herat and met our lamb uh, and explained what transition would be. He had, be, he had been accused uh, of deserting the people of those areas because they felt that their security uh, would be severely undermined. Yet when he went back to many of those places, he found the same people thanking him for transition because uh, people had a renewed confidence in the capability of the Afghan security forces. Now that picture will not be uniform in every place. There will certainly be setbacks along the way. But the process of transferring security responsibility is moving ahead at a good pace. The third point is that the training uh, and fielding of the Afghan security forces is also moving ahead uh, and delivering results in terms of the increased confidence and capability of the army and the police force. They certainly still have weaknesses uh, in areas like logistics uh, and intelligence, uh, but we still have a period of time ahead of us to continue that training process. And I'm genuinely encouraged by what I see as I travel around the country uh, of the confidence that those forces have. In January, 39% of all operations in Afghanistan were actually led by the Afghan security forces themselves. And we're seeing brigade-level operations in uh, several parts of the country which are being planned and executed by the Afghans, often with some help from us, but increasingly uh, relying on their own resources. And that's why it will be possible for our mission between now and the end of 2014 to move gradually but uh, increasingly uh, away from leading uh, combat uh, missions and more towards uh, training and support for the Afghan security forces. That does not mean uh, that ISAF troops will not be involved in combat. They will be where that is needed, but there will be an evolution uh, which leads us more towards the Afghan security forces taking the lead. At the same time uh, as we do this, we will be creating the space and the time in which non-security um, progress can also be made. Uh, for example, we support the efforts of the government of Afghanistan to explore the possibility of a political process uh, which could lead to the end of the insurgency. Now, I would emphasize that this is still very tentative uh, and it is unlikely, in my opinion, to lead to a very early breakthrough, but it is promising 
uh, that at least we have several strands of activity which are exploring uh, the possibility for more serious talks with the insurgents. Secondly, we have the field of governance and development. As you may know, Japan will be hosting a conference in Tokyo in July, which aims at making more specific commitments uh, to support Afghanistan through uh, development assistance. But it will also have to involve uh, greater clarity on what Afghanistan itself will do uh, to make the sort of investment which uh, many of our countries are prepared to make worthwhile and effective. So I expect to see some progress there. Uh, lastly, of course, we will also be seeing developments in the longer term security framework uh, in which Afghanistan will be living after 2014. And we will see some of these issues, of course, at the Chicago uh, NATO summit in May, uh, where we will be discussing issues like uh, the ongoing funding of the Afghan National Security Forces. Uh, we will be talking about NATO's uh, support for the security forces beyond 2014 in areas like uh, training. Uh, and I hope that by the time we get to Chicago, we will also have seen the uh, signature of a uh, strategic partnership between the United States and Afghanistan. Uh, that is not a negotiation, of course, which I am directly involved in, uh, and there are still challenges ahead uh, in achieving it. But I think there is a sense of optimism uh, in Kabul that that could now be achievable. The bottom line is that we have a strategy which was set at the Lisbon summit uh, in November 2010, uh, and that strategy remains valid. And when I talk to ministers and senior officials from uh, countries that are involved in the ISAF alliance, I am repeatedly struck by the degree of solidarity there is uh, behind that strategy. Uh, it's the best way of uh, achieving uh, an Afghanistan which by the end of 2014 will still face big challenges, uh, but which will be able to stand as a viable state and build for the future, albeit with a long-term partnership uh, with NATO and many of our countries. So I will finish my remarks there, and uh, I'll be glad, of course, to take any questions or listen to any comments.